Welcome everyone to yet another LinkedIn Live with me, Mark Stavina from Winning EQ. I help organizations improve their results through improving the emotional intelligence of its people. It's another way of saying I'm a leadership coach. Speaking of emotional intelligence, we have an expert in emotional intelligence about to join us right now. He's a mentor of mine, uh, a man who has taught me so much about leadership and the business of leadership coaching. He's one of the best out there. He's coming in from the UK as well. So very lucky to have him give us his time at this hour of the day over in London. And I'm really excited to bring him in. We're going to talk about emotional intelligence and break it down as it pertains to behavioral styles and personality styles. I'll let him tell you more about that. Mark Francis will join us. He is a leadership coach, as I mentioned. He's a, a wine connoisseur as well. He's a dolphin trainer. Let me just leave it there, dolphin trainer. Let's uh, bring him in and tell us what that means exactly. Welcome to the stage, Mark Francis, all the way from London. Welcome, Mark. How are you, my friend? Yeah, I'm in top, top form, Mark. It's great to see you. Thanks for inviting me. It's a real pleasure to be here. You're always in top form. When are you not in top form and how do you do it? Can't remember. <laughs> uh, speaking of personality, dolphin trainer. I yeah. said it. You have it on your bio. Uh, I loved your description and the story that comes with that. Tell us more about you being a dolphin trainer. Yeah, it's a passion of mine, and it's not about dolphins. It's about their mentality, their their extraordinary EQ, winning EQ that dolphins have. And it's an analogy or metaphor, if you like, that just says, can we as human beings, as leaders, can we educate others in a way that transmits EQ, not just IQ? And my, I love dolphins because they're just so bright. They're so capable. They're so uh, intellectual, but also loads of emotional intelligence and so that's the that's the the metaphor of dolphin trainer brilliant metaphor mark so we're going to talk about specifically uh well, i i guess people that are joining us that are listening in watching or watching the recording for that matter have at one stage of their career filled out or completed a personality assessment test there's so yeah. many out there yeah. and they're used for so many different reasons um tell us a little bit about some of your favorites that are circulating out there in the uh, the the world of organizational culture uh, or specifically one that you like to use and why? Well, the key here is pretty much all of the personality testing that we may have come across in our lives comes from Carl Jung, Swiss psychologist, psychiatrist, psychoanalyst, who's the father of personality profiling, really. And so it doesn't matter which one you choose, Byro B, Myers-Briggs, you might have heard of, Color Insights is the one we like to use because it's a simple language because you use a color to describe the main character type. So there are four main character types and four main colors, and therefore it becomes a simple language to use. So red, blue, green, and yellow. And so that's why we choose that one. But there's, it's all Jungian by background. Mm -hmm. Well, as a, the title of our talk suggests today, it helps us improve results individually. So tell us a little bit more about the discovery insights that you use and, and your company, Spire, uh, that I've also used and similar models. Um, how does it help us with our results? Yeah, yeah. Flexing your style to improve your results is the theme of this session. And actually, I wanted to give context first mm -hmm. and talk about brain wiring. So neuro-linguistic brain language, how our brain is wired, drives our behavior and our mind and body as one system. And that that that's contextualizing everything we're now going to talk about, because Jung and personality style is then reflected in how we speak our language our brain language comes out both verbally and physically in body language and so color insights is just one of the ways in which that is brought to life key message here is about understand self who am i naturally how is my brain wired and therefore how do i behave related to that know myself first and I can, if I'm aware of my own behaviors and natural style, I can choose consciously to adapt that style, to flex that style, 
to speak the language or connect with the other person that I'm trying to influence. So that's the that's the context and the background to why mm -hmm. sites or any of these tools make such a difference. Self concept first, and then you flex your style to to adapt. Mark, can we take a deeper dive? And, and, and uh, well, that was a rhetorical question. I know we can. Uh, yes. but, but yeah, I love that. And I actually want to peel away another layer. You mentioned the styles, you mentioned self awareness being important. So, using whatever model you're using, let's take discovery insights, we get to see the way that we're showing up, our behavior, our personality style. Given the situation, will normally bring about a response and therefore a behavior. Tell us a little bit more where, how do we develop these personalities? And is it something you just kind of born with and you're stuck with? But I'm guessing that it's not, especially as you say, flexing your style or being able to flex your style. This come from one of the tools that we love to use, and I'm going to share now is five drivers mm. drivers of personality you talked about are you born with this and it is a it is a balance of nature and nurture but there's a significant amount which is nature mm. and the drivers which i've just highlighted here kayla's five drivers k-a-h-l-e-r kayla an american psychologist kayla's five drivers these are magical i've i've, I've underlined the two that actually reflect my natural character. I'm a try harder, hurry up kind of guy. So, and this does connect rather rather neatly with the color energies, which we'll talk about more in a moment. So try harder and hurry up, but there are three other key drivers of behavior. And actually that is what drives my behavior. So when you and I had that um, interesting conversation in 2020, when then the pandemic hit the world, we both launched a, a, um, um, a session online or a series of, of podcasts to help people, right? I mean, it's as simple as that. Winning EQ had a brilliant podcast, which I listened to, and, and the ones we did was called Boost. That's right. One of, the, one of the elements that I was triggered by when you and I had a conversation was my behavior was totally connected to this under stress. You know, COVID should have said, just relax a bit. You don't have to leave the house, in fact, if you don't need to or want to. And my energy was, I've got to try harder. I've got to work harder. I've got to find a solution to this problem. So the drivers are the context. And you can see that both in your energy and in your natural behavior. So I walk fast. When I get off a plane, I am in competition with everyone else to reach customs first. Mm. And that is a hurry up driver. Right. It also reflects a natural red energy, competitive task orientation, time bound. Mm. Oh, I could talk about this all day. Mark, self-awareness, very important for our individual results. Yeah. No doubt, then it's also important to be able to identify the styles of others because we're, yeah. we're working with people every day. We're in interaction. We're building relationships. We're collaborating. We're in teams. So tell us a little bit more about the importance and how we can use the styles, not just for our own results, but for connection and influence with others. I'm going to, as I speak, I'm and the relative colors there they are there they are right so your key question was how can we understand and use these to to understand others and then influence others and you can see and hear these in language so pace of speech pace of walking suggests a certain color energy or style so beautifully, red is for task and results. If your energy is a red energy, it's passionate, it's focused, it's driven. Mm -hmm. If you have lovely blue energy, it's calm, considered, data-driven, evidence-driven, process-orientated. And I'm staying calm in my language because I'm now moving into green energy, which is a people energy, collaborative, thoughtful, thought through, caring team orientated and then the yellow which is my shirt kind of giving it away 
energized, enthusiastic, open-minded, risk-taker, future mm. orientation. Mm. And I hope even in the sharing there, Mark, I'm sharing a, a different pace of speech, a different energy. And you can see it. You can see it in others where if your antenna are out for personality, style, and color energy, you can hear it and you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a couple, couple of examples, Mark, just a couple of simple examples. A yellow might use the word excited when a blue describes the same thing as interesting. Mm. So it's, it's just a different language which reflects natural style and adaptive style. We are in resistance a lot with other personalities. And, and I say this to a lot of people that I coach, uh, being able to understand and connect and meet people where they're at is actually a, an act of empathy, isn't it? Oh, yeah, huge. You're putting yourself in their shoes so that you can connect as opposed to focusing on how resistant you are to their behavior right now. Uh, don't we? We can get in our heads and be like, oh, just so hard to get along with this person. Or we judge. Like, oh, Mark's being a real jerk right now. I can't with him. Rather than, oh, I see the behavioral style that Mark is showing up or reverting to right now. And as you mentioned, a lot of that comes from nature and nurture. They're immediate, our immediate environment when we grow up. We sometimes don't have a say. Most of the time when we're little kids, we adopt certain personality styles of our parents and people that are in our care or caring for us, I should say. So yes, at, to, just to add to your point, Connecting with people where they're at, we're more likely then to have them on board to what we're saying. We're limiting the friction. We're limiting the resistance. So now we can, as you said before, we can flex the style, guide the other person perhaps into stepping into a less familiar style or less dominant. But we all possess, we possess, is that true? We possess all of them in some quantity. Yeah, and yeah. It, it, so many things you just said that resonated with me, Mark. This point about resist resistance, you know, that we're naturally attracted to people where the personality has similarity and mm -hmm. we resist the differences when actually the opportunity is to dial up the similarities. That's the point. Mm -hmm. We do have all four color energies in our natural profile. Yeah. And it's the different levels and different preferences, but actually I can dial one up. I can decide, even though I lead with yellow energy, I can decide to dial up blue energy. And so I need to be more considered and more prepared and more rigorous mm. Do spreadsheets, not just pictures to put it simply. You can decide to do that. And that means you dial down resistance and you dial up attraction by taking a step towards the other person's energy. I, we, we like to call it color energy. Take a step towards their energy. Are they logic-driven energy or are they emotion-driven energy? Take a step towards them rather than just be determinedly yourself. Yes, you're a wonderful artist, by the way. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll take that, stick men. <laughs> <laughs> the, the resemblance is uncanny. I'm assuming that's you in the- Yeah, uh, it's, it's you and me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so, okay, absolutely. Uh, I like that step toward their energy and knowing the colors. And that takes practice. Well, it takes awareness, right? Using the model, understanding the different energies and how they show up, as you suggested, and then practicing. And the word there that really comes up for me when you were just saying that is to enable us to do that better and more often is curiosity. Yeah. That resistance normally comes with, I'm not familiar with this person's behavior. I'm not in alignment with it because that's not how I would act. And we're not curious enough to lean, step into it, as you said, and learn more about it and learn how to step into it ourselves. I'll give you an example straight away, Mark, of this awkwardness to change or sometimes inability to change. Mm. We did a session, my wonderful colleague, Amanda, and I did a session with a global team earlier today and online. And the leader, the CIO of the group, the, the head of information for their, their group globally, admitted when we were talking about this, I'm a very naturally high red energy, red followed by blue. I admit that. We went into breakout groups to do an exercise, and I 
went into that breakout group just to observe the leader. And he said, right, guys, we've been in 10 minutes and this is the task we need to do. And he caught himself and he said, hold on, hold on. I'm being very red here and we don't all know each other because this is a breakout group that was thrown together. We should start by introducing each other. Let me first of all say, my name is James. And then mm -hmm. he shared a little bit about himself. So he caught himself being task only and task first, which is a red blue energy and thought, no, that's not appropriate when you don't know the people in the room, even though it's his natural style. M a magical example of what we're talking about. Yeah, uh, thanks for that anecdote. That perfectly sums up that uh, scenario where if we can just catch ourselves and understand how our behaviors may not work with others, and more importantly for the objective, that was the objective, getting everyone together and getting to know each other and is being in my red serving that objective or is it not uh, oh, so I, I love that example and and that's that's one thing i'm i'm often saying to people when we're working on these models and and the self-awareness of the personality styles is that there's no good or bad there's no right or wrong we have a tendency to judge personalities huge, our, huge. even with ourselves you know, the, the assessment that, that you would take for your discovery insights is the word choice exercise, isn't it? And, and yes, folks, exactly if you right. want to do that, uh, I, I'm going to have you um, connect with Mark after this if you're interested to learn more. And it's a very quick test uh, where you're just circling words that most resonate with you that feel like, on average, they're more like, here we go. He's got it somewhere. I've got it, I've got it somewhere. Said. I've got it somewhere. Keep it's talking. It's a quick assessment. I'll just tell people while you search for it. And it's amazing how accurate it. It, it can be. And some people <laughs> even judge the words as they're filling them out. Some people don't choose the words, even though it's the truth. And uh, he's on a he's on a scavenger hunt. He's, he's, I'm, I'm on the hunt. It's definitely <laughs> here somewhere. He's on the hunt. Easy Thank to you. fill in. Easy to fill in. And, and as you said, get get guys to get in touch with me. More than delighted to share it. Oh, I found it. <laughs> I found it. I don't this really is know. the yellow energy. Yellow energy yeah. all over the show. Right? <laughs> it's true. Simple Seriously. as this. Simple as that. So yep. you you have four columns. You circle two words, and at the bottom you add up the totals, and it'll give you the color balance. As you say, Mark, we've got all four energies in us. It yep. just gives you the balance. You know, you might score 15 blues and only two in yellow, which means you're dominantly blue yeah. naturally. But you can dial up the other colors in you terms can. of the situation. And it's important, like I said, that you don't feel like if you're dominant red, you might have a perception of what red looks like or feels like to others some people don't want to be that or they're they judge themselves or they're ashamed that they're high in is is it green that's kind of like the people pleaser would that be yes a, yeah 100 yeah. because 100%. you know there are there are some liabilities there we go you know people uh and 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 that is also the key is that we don't see them as good or bad we don't see them as right or wrong we just acknowledge when being predominantly in that energy where it doesn't serve us or it doesn't serve the people around you. It's information. It's great information. And that's great. So if it's not working, as you said, Mark, we get to flex. We get to, we get to flex into another style that might not be as comfortable. It's not our comfort zone. But that's where we get to practice. And this is where leadership development is at the crux, right? If you want to improve yeah. your your leadership, you got to do this work. Yeah, and I think one of the things you said is really important. There's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Truly great leaders come from all four natural color energies. They're just able to dial up the energy needed to lead, either to being incredibly explicit with this is our direction so people get clarity, or actually I'm going to dial up green and connect collaboratively collaboratively with the team to come up with the solution together. Great leaders have to be read and strong in that sort of mindset. Mm. You just have to dial up the right energy for the right situation. That's the key. Mark, we've already touched on it a little bit. I want to speak a little bit more about how these, how practicing these 
and learning the language of something like Discovery Insights. How can it help? We've, we've talked about how it helps individual, help us individually with our own results. How can it help bringing this kind of work into teams and organizations? What are the benefits? Oh, it's, oh, it's, well, the benefits are uh, increasing awareness and ultimately increasing mutual respect. Mm. So I'm, I'm working with a professional football team at the moment. Uh, that's English football, um, professional football team. And our results aren't good at the moment. Mm. One of the things we've, we've done a, a, a color assessment. So all of the players know each other's color energies. And as it happens, the team leads very strongly with blue and green energy. So it's highly reflective, highly thoughtful. Under stress, everyone goes quiet. With blue and green energy, which is a reflective energy, stress creates internalization. It's like I need to think deeply, but I certainly won't express. And you know, as a, a professional athlete, that actually there are times in a team when you need to be rabble rousers and get everyone g'd up to to achieve amazing things but when the team is naturally reflective and quiet that's not easy to do so my role is to discuss that with the team and say okay who 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 can bring a, a more yellow red expressive energy to help the rest of us it's a great discussion with professional athletes mm. oh and as you're saying that obviously i it's crucial the coaches of these teams are intimately aware of of the differences and and that's the challenge and i think great coaches are able to speak to their players individually in different ways so it lands for that personality but then when everyone's together and you've got all these different personalities together how can you have it land for everybody uh it's when, when i see coaches the great coaches of the world through this lens it's really impressive that that they're able to use this kind of model effectively isn't it and it takes practice oh yeah oh, well, you, you know interesting the, the truly great coaches and you've you know you have been a professional athlete with a number of of mm -hmm. examples of great coaches for me the truly great ones don't even need to have this model you instinctively mm -hmm. get it, right you feel it because you you have that innate eq which is one of your great strengths in terms of bringing that out of us and therefore they don't you don't even have to have the model they kind of live it anyway mm -hmm. i think where this is useful is it's about awareness it heightens awareness mm -hmm. and that glorious aha moment now i understand mm -hmm. i adopted this energy uh, to an individual for whom it was the opposite of what i should have done Mm. It connect in their language. This is back to the point I made about brain language. How our brain is wired is fundamentally different to anyone else. So understand the wiring and adapt your style. That's the key. I want to come back to what you're saying about these great leaders and great coaches that innately they have it. They don't really use the model. It's just it's built in. I, I suspect it's also because they are so connected and grounded in the objective and that is to get this team firing and i also believe that self-awareness wise they are able to regulate their own emotions because how many coaches if we want to talk about emotional intelligence self-regulation is is one of the the drivers you know one of the the important categories or factors that make up emotional intelligence and if you can't regulate your own emotions to suit again to suit the objective that's at hand and that's getting your message across perhaps to a player or a group of players then you've already lost and you're going to be ineffective when it comes to your communication and influence if you can put aside or regulate your own emotion to be able to focus on what's important i might be really upset right now and beside myself and under pressure and i'm about to lose my shit but that's not going to help if that comes across to my team. Oh, You're so and, good at that too, Mark. I got to say. Uh, well, th thank you. But the opposite is true as well. I I, I work with a, a brilliant Swedish coach um, called Mik Kastara, who's won various championships in Sweden. He's been all over the world. He's worked in China, the U.S., um, in Greece, and Mika is quite considered. He's he leads with blue energy, blue and red energy, and so he's very calm. 
by nature. And he and I speak about this. There are times when he shouldn't be calm. Yes. You know, that, yes, sometimes you need to be in considered. And, and other times you need to show passion. And that's one of the things that we talk about all the time is, is, is change to the situation rather than just, this is my style, take it or leave it. Mm. That's not great leadership. It's not. And as you're saying that, one of the biggest challenges, because I totally agree with you, is doing exactly what you said, changing it up, flexing while doing it authentically. <laughs> oh, Isn't that yeah. the challenge? Like, Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> right. Where it's like, if, if it's you, you, sometimes it can, it can really look manufactured and people see straight through it as well. So Look, we're, we're here to tell you leadership's not easy, folks. Uh, we wish it was, it was, and everyone would be great leaders if that was the case. But I think fortunately for us that that's not the case, but we all get to practice and try being the best leaders we can be. And this topic today, behavioral styles, we could go on about it, couldn't we, Mark? Look at that, 27 minutes. This is what happens when you and I get together. It feels like five minutes. Um well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up because people are getting into their workday. Thank you for everyone that's been popping in and popping out. Thank you so much to Mark Francis. How do we find you, Mark? How do we connect with you? I think the best is probably email, isn't it? It just is. I mean, it can be ultimately WhatsApp and things like that. But I would suggest email mark at the com. You aspire partnerships, probably even a better email just to land the word partnership. So mark at the aspirepartnership.com. And I've just put up a little QR code, which is the website for the Uspire group. Tell us about your other company as well, if we want to see, we want to find you there. Yeah, I, I have a company called Augmenta, A-U-G-M-E-N-T. If you go www.augmenta.eu, you'll come across a website where I talk about different countries and cultures mm. and how you influence in different countries, lots of little videos. So by all means, go on my personal website as well. Thanks so much for that, Mark. Can't wait to do this with you again. And thank you so much again for your time. Yeah, it's, it's awesome, Mark. It's uh, last words from me. The mind and body is one system. Mm. And once you understand the wiring of your brain, you can affect how you feel and how you act. Mind and body, one system. So understand yourself first and take a step towards the other person. There's your mic drop right there. <laughs> and with an illustration, you're the best, Mark. Fans. Yeah, walking fingers. <laughs> and walking fingers. That's the yellow energy, folks. There it is. There it is. You witnessed it. There it is. All right, we're going to let you go. Thanks so much, my man. See you again Huge soon. Huge pleasure. Cheers, Mark. Mark, Frank, I mean it. Every time we get together and have these leadership discussions, five uh, five minutes, well, it feels like five minutes. It's actually 30 to an hour. So uh, we were so lucky to have Mark all the way from the UK. He is an expert in the behavioral styles, in leadership, in sales, negotiations, you name it. Look him up. Uh, if you're looking for a coach that specializes in that, look him up, hire him. Bring him and his team in. They're wonderful. They're fantastic. All right, everyone, get back into your workday. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next week.